What is going on everybody? Welcome back to What If EU4 Started 100 Years Earlier. I've just tapped out of the game by accident, sorry. <laughs> but we continue. We're getting towards the end. I think there's about four episodes to go. We have some big events still going on. France, yeah, well, they're, they're winning in Portugal at the moment. This is a weird war. Look, there's, there's not many troops from either side here. Of course, we also saw Aragon separate piece out of it. It doesn't look like they had to give anything major up. Just worth noting. Um, that, that that happened. They did not have to give anything too big up. I'm just going to go into observe mode. Gets rid of some of the stuff up here. If you want to add me on Steam, I guess you can. <laughs> My name <laughs> is just there, but that's all. Um, and you can still go back and see it, so it makes no real difference. But there you go. I, I don't know why. There's observe and spectate. Look, if you're wondering how to do this, I sometimes get asked. Just press the button above tab and left of one. I don't know how to describe the button. There's spectate mode where it has your name, and then there's observe. I don't believe there's any any real difference. Um, but there you go. Just just preference, I guess. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't know if there's a, any actual difference to what you can do. I don't think so. I just usually use observe. There you go. France did peace out with Portugal. I do not know what exactly for, but that is over. France is still in a war with, well... Pretty much all of the, um, most of North Africa and the Middle East. So have fun with that. What is that? What was that for again? I'm sure we looked, but I've forgotten. Oh, for Cyprus. Uh, okay. Sweden. Oh, oh, yeah. Sweden is struggling here. Although Britain's on their team, so they won't lose too much. You would hope, anyway. I say that, they are fully... <laughs> fully occupied. Brabant there? Wait, there's Hess? No, okay, I thought they'd grown over here, they have not. Okay, well, they're still doing pretty well. Aquileia is occupying the Papal State at the moment with, who's that, Gelray. Now, what's going on there? What, what's the cause of that? Oh, okay, that's a lot of people. Byzantium, Aragon. <laughs> that's not good for the Papal State then. Or Bologna. I think a lot of these wars are heresy wars, so we're not actually seeing too much in terms of big peace deals. But still, what is Byzantium's religion? It is Orthodox. Okay, just thought I'd check. Japan has fully sieged out Chin here. Let's see, will they take any of the mainland? Also, look how much these guys have grown. Um, Sri Gotapura. They're doing quite well. And there is a lot of Japanese troops in their territory. Not sure why, but there is. Sweden still clinging on. <laughs> no peace deal yet. Um... Oh, Bavaria just crushed their navy there. Yeah, I'm guessing they're just going to let the ticking war score maybe tick up a bit. Because if not, Britain will hold them back a little bit. Thirteen colonies is growing quite quite quickly. As did Aragonese California. That's now spread the whole way along the coast. Pretty impressive. Aragonese Mexico's also now reached the western side as well. This one, you can't really see it, but there is Aragonese Louisiana, which is separate here. There you go. But they're, they're still obviously both, I believe, yeah, part of Aragon. They're not independent or anything, although some of them are allied. Strange. Oh, they just attacked the two Sicilies. We'll go look at that in a second. Castile. I don't know where Castile is. They must still exist somewhere. Oh, here. Okay. It's not like Scotland, who have just become Canada. <laughs> um, but there we go. This looks big. Aragon. Not with Portugal, but they... Oh, they were already in this war. Wait. No, they weren't, but it's the same group, pretty much, with Austria this time. Up against the two Sicilies, again. Should be an easy win for them. Still no peace deal from Denmark, surprisingly enough. 
Let's have a little look at some of the kings. We've got King George. There we go. King George I, William D. De Anjou dynasty has taken over England as well now. Okay. We'll just use... Let's have a look. Dynasty map mode. De Anjou. De Voila is in Iberia. De Bourbon in France. De Voila is also there. Id, I think that's Hess or Hass. Is it Hass or Hess? It's Hess. De Anjou all over Bavaria and Hungary. Sweden as well. So probably the biggest one. I guess, actually no, because the Paleogulos one is Byzantium, Russia and Aquileia, I guess in terms of land, is quite a lot. Fuglugrid, pretty big as well for Delhi, of course. There's a lot of big ones, the Selassie dynasty. There you go, quite a few big dynasties. But yeah, Deanju and Paleogulos are the main ones. Oof, that's not looking good for the Sicilies at all. Denmark did peace out for some more territory, so they're on the comeback train. They now have nearly 100k soldiers, and of course that all-important alliance with Bavaria. They better hope they keep that. If they were to lose that, then Bavaria could obviously... They'd be pretty exposed, whereas Bavaria just has troops all over the place. Oh my goodness, Aquileia just looked, took like half the two Sicilies landed one go. How have you not got a coalition from that? Okay, they might... Oh, they do. They do. Bavaria's in it. Oh god. If this leads to a war, it would depend who declares it. That would be huge. Because obviously Aquileia could call on Byzantium, Aragon and Austria to defend them. Um, so that would be... Whether they all... If they all did, that would be... Obviously up against the coalition members. Um, Bavaria. It is just Bavaria and Sicily mostly. But Bavaria brings Hungary. So that would probably be fairly... That would be pretty exciting to watch. We'll keep an eye on if it happens. Germian and Dolkadir here are... Oh my goodness, okay. I was like, how are they losing to um, Shervan? But that that's why. They've got a lot of help. <laughs> a lot of help. Mamluk's just staying out of this one. <laughs> yeah, this is not going to go well for Dolkadir. Or Germian. Is that, is that purely an Oman 75 stack? It is. That is very unbalanced. But more importantly, that is impressive from Oman. Also a Delhi war as well with Hassa and the Mamluk. Oh, okay. That's why the Mamluks maybe aren't in that other one. We hit oh, the Age of Absolutism for the first time. Well, obviously for the first time. You only hit it once. I'll oh, keep an eye on Aquilae. They are in another war now, but this isn't the one with Bavaria. It's worth noting they are not allied to Russia. It is Byzantium that links all of... Yeah, Byzantium has Aquilae and Russia. So far, 32 war score. Looking pretty good. I don't know what this war was even for. It was Byzantine Crusade against Germian. Okay, British Conquest of Chesapeake. Where is that? Is that... Oh, my goodness. If they... If th if that's this, the 13 colonies might be about to get very, very big. Yeah. I don't know if... It doesn't say. It just says Kaweta Federation. So I don't know. But is Chesapeake a separate one? Sorry. I don't know where they would be. If they're not, like, massive, I, I don't really know. But I would guess they would border somewhere that Britain has. Whether that be Newfoundland or... Yeah, I'm guessing it's part of this thing, maybe. If you look, conquest. Oh yeah, look, the, the province Chesapeake. Sorry, my bad. So yeah, they're they're probably going to take a lot of this and form a very powerful colony there in the thirteen colonies. Britain are currently eighth out of the great powers, below everyone else who's a great power. I just state the obvious, George. Mamluks seventh. I feel like, who's the weakest of these? I, I don't know, I feel like the Mamluks might overall now be the weakest, which is quite a change. I don't know. I feel like they have the least options. They're also, I didn't even realise, well they are not. Oh no, no, they are at war with Aragon now, and Delhi at the same time. They, they escaped from Delhi, I guess, but yeah, Aragon's now here. And doing pretty well against the Hafsids. There are some Sicilian separatists. Sicilian, I don't know if that, 
two Sicilian separatists it doesn't sound right. So I don't know if, if these guys were successful, because also this is Sicily. I don't know if it would go to Sicily, or the two Sicilies is just extra confusing. And if you think of it, there's actually three Sicilies, because there's two here and then there's one here, so that adds up to three, just to confuse things even more. But yeah, Germian is not looking too healthy right now. Well, they're doing out. Germian's okay at the moment, although that 150 stack is not fun. But Dolkadir, definitely, yeah, they're gonna, <laughs> they're not gonna enjoy this, I can imagine. Oh, there's the peace deal. Yep, Byzantium moved around this way and took more here. You again did not... I think Russia maybe got a bit from here, but not much. Did they? Maybe these three provinces. But there you go. And Dolkadir will probably... And Armenia maybe... Get torn up a bit here. Dolkadir... Well, Byzantium is certainly growing. And they will soon border Mamluks. If they keep going like this. Cyprus did stay as Cyprus, by the way, but Dolkadir managed to get this island, uh, Crete, which I think is what the war was for. There it is, and their retina is released from Dolkadir, as is Kurdistan, um, and I think Armenia got away with that one. Didn't have to give anything up. Oh, the Mamluks and Hafsids have turned it around with, yep, a 100 stack in the desert. Always a good idea for attrition to do that. Not... Aragon is now losing that war. Japan is at war with Chagatai and everyone again. Bengal is just even around. I didn't know that. There's a lot going on there. But let's have a look at what Britain did. Yes, the 13 colonies growing very quickly right now. If we look at overall countries, I feel like we'll see who, who's the most developed colony now. It is not on the first page. Um, Majapahit is still growing, but again, a lack of colonies will keep them off the top. Even Shun is up there, but I guess not the institutions. Uh, Tajanpura, Sri Gotapara, Amman is up there above Bar in Denmark. The first colony is Portuguese Mali still, um, between Kute and Mayinseng, but above Dolkadit. Then it's the 13 colonies, Rio de Prata and Aragonese Brazil, all in close Sort of competition and then Carabas is fifth so there you go but Portuguese Mali still the number one developed colony Portugal is just every time we look they're just eating up everything that remains that isn't Portugal down here Jesus they're just taking everything is that translated into like the culture map mode not yet, no way. There is a bit of Castilian and Portuguese, but no, it's not really changed too much. If we come up this way, well, we've got, we've got lots of different types here as well. American, Scottish, American, American, Mexican, Aragonese. I don't know what Mexican is in this, like an American as well, because like, that's kind of a mix of England and France here in this American bit, Mexican. Is it just Aragon's been here so long, it's kind of... Mexico is now a thing, or Mexican is now a thing, I guess. Castile is struggling. They, it's because Castile's losing this, because they're fighting a load of one stacks, it, so it looks like they're losing, but they have a way bigger army. <laughs> I reckon these Brazil's still growing, as is Rio de Prata, two of the other most developed colonies. Aragon is losing. Still. Great Britain just climbed into... Oh, they've embraced the institution. That would be why. Climbed up into fourth. It's actually very close between everyone that isn't Delhi and Portugal. And for the... Oh, with the institution. Obviously worth noting, Portugal has taken the number one spot. I think that's the first time we've seen them in the number one spot. But there we go. Obviously the institution helping there. They're about 800, 900 dev behind without it oh bengal is just one province okay that's not so big japan did peace out with chin i don't don't think they did anything crazy um i don't know what that war was even for but there you go who are you fighting now okay <laughs> have fun getting war scott oh they're now a tributary state of japan okay well that I'll give them some more money. There's been a lot of tributary states throughout this game. <laughs> That's a vassal. 
Who's who's that? Who is Turov? Oh, these guys. Okay, well that's not that big. Being a deal. Have you reached the whole way yet? Yes, you are all the way out here now. Um, surprise, we might see a Russia-Japan conflict at some point. Now that they're much nearer, they do actually border each other here, sort of through the island. But yeah, they might. They've, they've mainly not got involved in Asian affairs, but they certainly could if they wanted to. I say that they are now going after Prussia, which should be a pretty easy win for them. Already got it mostly done. Yeah, this would be a good, good little blob for them to take. Good strategic move, I would say, from from Russia. Another contender. They're in the top eight, sixth place at the moment. Again, if you remove the institution, which I assume they'll get in the next ten minutes or so. <laughs> not not a very accurate amount of years, but you know, I mean, the Western Europeans have got it, so it'll get to them sooner or later. They are sort of. They are third in overall individual country development. Is that they might actually be second because Portugal's pretty low um, on their own. Dev, yeah, they are actually second in overall development, about half of what Delhi has. But yeah, once you take away all the colonies, Aquileia is actually up to seventh on their own. That's quite a lot. I mean, who is the highest great power that is the lowest on this list? I think it's Aragon here. I believe. I think the other seven were above them. That's quite impressive. I think the Hafsids won here because before Aragon had this area connected and now it's not connected, so they won that one. Aragon didn't, I don't know, Portugal probably wouldn't join them, but that would have obviously helped quite a bit. Russia does have enough boats, it would seem. Yeah, Russia does not seem to have any naval presence here, so that's allowed them to keep hold of this province, I guess, with the crossings. Although there's the peace deal, Russia takes it anyway. Leaving a bit for Prussia, including Riga, but they take the rest to give themselves some more coast up this way. Bavaria is just stationed inside of Hungary. I don't know what they're up to, but their troops are always just here. They are not integrating them yet. There is a trade embargo between Bavaria and Russia, so maybe some tensions. France, are you embargoed? France has been very quiet, actually, since... I mean, I know they beat Portugal earlier on, or at least didn't lose. But they had a few defeats last time. They're embargoing Britain, and then all of Britain and Portugal's colonies embargoing them by the look of it. That's pretty rough. Just the Amazon sort of remaining at this point. And I guess all the central US as well. Sorry, just forgetting about anyone <laughs> who lives in this region. But look at Aragonese, Louisiana. It's reaching up to sort of cut off the growth of the 13 colonies. God, do they have their own army? They do. It's at 24. Very interesting world when you have these colonial... I guess Aragon is just replacing Castile. And I mean, Castile's still here, so it's not too crazy obviously Canada is Scotland so I guess it's kind of two extra ones in the mix than you'd normally get on the basis that Scotland and Aragon are there Castile is still here so I guess if you maybe just one extra if we throw Scotland and Castile in as one because they're not doing too much but they are slowly slowly growing Did you lose this province, Japan? How? Maybe they did, maybe they didn't. I won't blame them for it, because I'm not sure. Aquileia's coalition is growing, but it's not fired yet. It would be scary if it did. Look at Bavaria's army. Should we have a look biggest armies while there's no major wars? Total troops. Delhi has the most. Russia's nearly caught up with them now. But with much lower, nearly at their force limit. In fact, 20 away from it. Whereas Delhi has, 
He's only sort of two thirds of the way there. Bavaria is third, and that doesn't include Hungary, who is towards the bottom of the page with another 140k. Should put them at about 390, so still nowhere near Russia or Delhi. Uh, Portugal is in fourth, but of course, again, they bring a lot of extra stuff with all their colonies, which is will probably be loads of. I think there's like 15 of them now, all with like 30k or that sort of number. You can imagine. Do the maths, I guess. Byzantium up there in fifth, above France. That's pretty impressive. And the Mamluks. Okay, then Aragon 185, Oman above the UK. Let's go, Oman. What ideas did Oman take? That might be contributing to this. Offensive trade economic quantity. Until they picked espionage, I feel like they were doing a great job of just picking things that really helped them. But yeah, I'm not sure about espionage. But yeah, quantity, trade, economic, and offensive, all pretty good combos. Maybe could have done with quality as well, but I think that would have been maybe one too many mil military groups. But yeah, they have just a ton of troops. I don't know how they're affording this. I don't know if there's a lot of trade. Trade value in node, 33.6. I mean, that's less than all some of the Indian nodes. It's a lot more than this node. <laughs> Alexandria, 2162 in Constantinople. Novgorod, 42. We'll just pick out some. I don't really understand. I'm not going to pretend I understand trade completely. <laughs> Genoa, 59. Big number equals good. English Channel, 120. 80, pretty much, in Lubeck. So that's another big one. So it's not, not terrible. But again, I guess Oman has pretty much all of this Hormuz. Not all of it, but most of it. Certainly. Do they? Yeah, they have 53%. So that helps them out. Denmark v Sweden again. We cycled through to that one again nice and quickly. <laughs> Apart from that, there's not too much going on over there. Looks like a very... can't see any... Oh, there's someone in Hungary. Who is that? <clears throat> That's just Sweden again. I don't know how they get down here. How does Sweden... Oh, they hired Russia's army. They only hired one stack. That's not too useful. And there we go. Russia will do what they're going to do, I guess, <laughs> over there. Why is Bosnia? Is Bosnia on your team? Okay, they are. Oh, Britain landed in Bosnia, but Bavaria is there to make sure it doesn't go. Oh, they're going to get wiped. Yep, there we go. That's 20k down the drain. And yeah, there we go, Russia. Finishing the job there. But yeah, it's not their whole army that's loaned to Sweden. It's just that one stack that seems to have disappeared anyway now. Oh, Denmark just lost a battle. Oh no, they won a battle up here actually to take the Shetland Islands. Portuguese Australia, there we go. They just keep adding new ones when we're not even looking. <laughs> That's another part of the world for Portugal. Aragon is out here too, in New Guinea. Majapahit is also still doing pretty well at getting the rest of the land. 62 ships between the Hawaiian nations there. But no one um, has come to join them just yet. There we go, everyone now has the institution, so the top eight is back as it was. The real close ones are France and the Mamluks. The rest, there's a bit of a comfortable gap. I guess Aragon's pretty close to France as well, at 40. But yeah, there's about 14. There's 14 between France and Mamluks. So that's definitely the closest of the gaps. And then, yeah, fourth to seventh is sort of overall... They, I, I, even Britain, I guess, you throw it in these five. There could be movement in there. I feel like these top three, maybe, they're all very far apart from each other and the rest. 
Okay, hang on, what happened here? <laughs> but I see Bavaria and Russia are at war. Is that separate or to do with this Sweden thing? Russia, with the help of Chernigov, Turov, and Riga, which is not much, attacked Poland, who brought in Bavaria, Hungary, Bosnia, Lithuania, Bohemia, Lebec, Denmark, Mauritius, Sicily, and Luka. Russia does outnumber Hungary and Bavaria, but I don't know if they outnumber Serbia, Bosnia, Lithuania, Bohemia, the other ones, and particularly Denmark as well on top of that. And they are losing right now, but they probably do need to piece out of that Sweden war, because, yeah, that's big for Denmark. But from this perspective, this is a big one. This is kind of... It's been lining... It's been getting towards this. I um, don't know if they could bring in Byzantium. That would help. But probably not in an offensive war. I feel like that's why we've never seen it. But, I mean, the AI must have felt that this was their chance. But I say that. All those Bavarian troops were here and ready. Already on the move. But, yeah, Russia's up this way. This is a big one. For next episode because that'll be it for this one so as always if you have enjoyed be sure to leave a like and a comment down below be sure to subscribe as well if you are new to the channel and i'll see you in the next one